So most of you are probably already aware by now that there are some changes to YouTube's terms and conditions, and you have probably been made aware of this because every other video in your YouTube subscription feed is a rant about the topic. And this channel, of course, is going to be no exception. That being said, I'm not going to cover the stuff that everyone else is covering uh, right off the bat, and I'm not going to be too ranty about it because that's just not really the style of the channel. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll link a video down in the description. It's by Philip DeFranco, who's, who effectively broke the story and provided most of the information that most of these rant videos are based off of right now. But I'm really just going to talk a little bit about what it means for the wider YouTube ecosystem and all that kind of stuff. But just before I get into the uh, the real content of the video, I'm going to take this as a good opportunity to plug some of the stuff that I do that's not on YouTube. Uh, the first and foremost one is that I do a weekly podcast. Now, some of you are probably already aware of this because I post uh, the videos to this channel, which I will not be doing here on in unless there is like a like a segment or something which I feel particularly suits this channel or that I want to show to you guys. Uh, but I'm actually just going to let the podcast run weekly on SoundCloud. It's soundcloud.com forward slash uh, who, what, where, and where is spelt W-E-R-E, -E, just like my last name. Of course, I will put a link to it down in the description below, and I will also put a link to the RSS feed where you can download the... Um, uh, the the MP3s as well as playing them, uh, but you also download you can download them in a free format as well. OGG, so it's a a little bit more Libra respecting over there. Once a week, I do a podcast with someone else. Um, at the moment, I'm still just switching around co-hosts right about now. We usually just have a bit of a chat. The reason it's of course on SoundCloud, and the reason why I'm not going to be uploading them in the future to this channel is because it like a lot of the stuff we talk about even though it kind of still focuses around tech it's not the same kind of tech that we talk about on this channel um and some of the people you know and and uh actually the 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 podcast videos that get uploaded to this channel are some of the most heavily downvoted videos uh, on this channel uh which is it's a, like it's sort of understandable because their format and even their content is a little stride away from uh, the usual content on this channel. The usual content on this channel is, of course, usually very Linux focused, and uh, it fits into a very nice small niche. Whereas the the podcast is a little bit broader, uh, and and it's a little bit more conversational, a little bit more casual. So if you are interested in following the podcast, check it out: soundcloudcom slash who what where and the RSS link and link to the site will be in the description down below. Uh, I've also got a Patreon in case you decide you want to support me. Links to that in the description be below. You don't have to. It's not actually a request. It's just that uh, some of the stretch goals involve just taking care of production costs. So, for example, the first stretch goal is to replace the ads on YouTube with Patreon money. So once I hit that milestone, the ads off the videos, um, you know, the ads go off the videos. So, um... It's not necessarily me asking for your cash right about now. It's just saying if you want to, you know, if you if you want me to stop running ads on this channel, then uh, you can supplement the money with Patreon if you wish. Um, there's also an IRC which is getting a lot of attention these days. Um, so I will put links to that, of course, down in the description below. Um, but there are, you know, there's quite it's, it's a good opportunity for me to sort of uh, talk to you in a bit more of a conversational style. Uh, social media, usually like uh, Twitter and 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 Reddit and so forth, they don't necessarily lend themselves to real time conversation uh, in the same way that IRC does. So it allows me to talk about the issues of the day. It allows me to have a bit more of a back and forth with you guys rather than than just have like um, a broad broadcast platform, which seems to be what Twitter is, isn't it? Like Twitter seems to have, have, have almost made a game of, of, you know, who can get the most followers, who can get the 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 most looked at tweets. And, and, and you know, it's, it's, you know, it's all about drama and this and, 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 and attention that. Um, and I feel like a lot of the social media these days just does tend to drive towards um, providing to providing people with a platform or um, uh, you know and 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 you know obviously people sort of embrace that in, in a lot of ways but IRC is just a step away where um, where it's a little bit more like well it doesn't matter you, you know you don't have followers and you don't have likes and it takes away all that 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 rubbish that fluff from um, from social media and it just gives you you know like the, the, the part where you talk to your friends, uh, which is quite good. And I like how the channels are done. So you go to different channels for different subject matter. So um, so it works really well. 
Um, so yeah, I'll see down in the description below. There's also a Reddit, chriswaredigital.reddit.com. Um, feel free to post any links that you'd like me to talk about on this channel or video ideas. That's probably the best place to put them in Reddit. Um, and of course, there is a Twitter at It's Chris Ware. So links to all of those will be down in the description below, but they're just some non youtube -y things that I wanted to plug before talking about the stuff that I'm going to talk about in this video. I usually plug stuff at the end of a video, but um, not that many people, even subscribers, not that many people make it to the very, very end of a video where I start plugging stuff. So I thought, I thought that, you know, just for a one-off, I thought I might do it at the beginning of a video. So, there are also going to be some links to two other videos, one by a guy called Cheers Kevin and another by H3H3, who both have what I consider at least good outlooks on this particular subject matter. The first thing I want to talk about is a lot of people are crying censorship about this, and I want to talk a little bit about that because censorship is a really serious issue, and I talk about it occasionally on this channel, and there are numerous open source initiatives and projects uh, out there to, to, to fight against censorship and even provide a safe voice um, and a safe uh, method of communication for people that might be under the cosh of a, of a, a uh, you know, a, a, a very authoritarian dictatorship, for example, or one that might not necessarily, uh, you know, agree with uh, their lifestyle choices or their friends or, um, you know, all, the, all that kind of stuff. So, so when it comes to open source, when it comes to ethical software and ethics in software, the word censorship has a lot of uh, baggage attached to it, like historical baggage and emotional baggage and all this kind of stuff. And I don't think this is really censorship. You can make the argument that it fits within the dictionary definition. But YouTube, and as you all at least should know, I have a very sort of checkered opinion of Google. On one hand, they can do something amazing. On the other hand, they can do something really detrimental to our, our privacy and our way, you know, and, and, and our, our digital rights. So, you know, as with most things in this world, it's, it's not exactly some, you know, it's not exactly all in or, or not. So, but YouTube, have managed to provide a way of providing us with um, a method of uploading an unlimited number of videos of practically an unlimited length with an unlimited amount of bandwidth allocation for free, right? Now that's remarkable, that is amazing. I can upload a video of any length to YouTube for it to be broadcast to the world in a really sort of efficient way for free. That's not censorship. That's the opposite of censorship. That's giving everyone a really useful platform. Well, not necessarily everyone, but a lot of people a really good platform. In fact, it's a, it's a kind of anti-censorship anti -censorship because it gives a much, it gives a voice to people like me who would otherwise not have a voice at all. And it would be more like uh, TV where the only people that could talk about political opinions are, you know, like, um, politicians and, uh, and and journalists and you know I, I I don't think it's a controversial thing to say these days that the state of mainstream journalism leaves a lot to be desired so I think from that regards YouTube has done more um, to give a platform to people that don't usually have one than it has to shutting people up now that being said you can make the argument well if YouTube now get to decide which videos are profitable and which aren't is that not potentially a way to shut down um, political speech, for example, as they have outlined? Um, and yes, but because this is YouTube's platform, YouTube do kind of have a right to, to censor. Um, and they do censor. You know, you can put inappropriate content. If you put like porn up on YouTube, it will get taken, it'll get flagged and taken down. If you put copyrighted stuff up on YouTube, they'll try and flag it and take it down. Um, and sometimes if you put completely uncopyrighted content up on YouTube, uh, it'll get flagged and taken down as well. So, um, so there is censorship already, uh, censorship against copyright, censorship against, uh, like adult content. Um, and, uh, so, so this isn't exactly like the introduction of censorship. And the thing is as well, is that advertisers will do what advertisers do. Um, and that's not really a great way of explaining it. Um, basically, this has already been in play for quite some time 
Anyway, there's a really good uh, sex education channel called Sexplanations. Um, and if it's a topic you want to, you know, if, you, if, you know, if you're in need of sex ed, it's a really good place to go, actually. Uh, it's really accessible. It talks about everything from health to recreation to rep reproduction. Um, and, it, you know, it covers all the bases and it's regularly updated and so much work goes into it. There are videos on that channel with over a million views that have made, like, pocket change. And I think that that's, that's, that's really... Um, that's really a crime because there is so much that can be learned. Especially, there are so many countries in this world where sex education is terrible, and this channel sort of, you know, is, is a learning resource for for millions and millions of people. And advertisers won't touch it because it's about sex. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's an educational channel. It's just it's about sex. Nah, not going to advertise with it. And maybe it's keywords that. Um, that might trigger it off, and it does look like it, it is keywords that actually sort of set this this bot off that uh, that demonetizes videos, and um, and there is an appeals process as well where there wasn't before, so silver linings and all that. But I think that's a real shame that even now, depending on the content, depends on how much money you make. So we're already in a situation where some uh, content creators have to make content a certain way, or have to make content about certain subjects. Um, simply in order to to make the monetization work anyway. So this is really just a formalization of that procedure. It also sort of allows them, and it also states from the off, we don't actually have to have a decent reason. We just have to, you know, it's, it, it, it is it is at our discretion. And I think this is to 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 work out a number of of, of um, issues that seem to be affecting YouTube now. Uh, Advertising on the internet in general and advertising on YouTube is actually on the decline. And part of that is because uh, it's not really seeing the return investment. Some of it's um, the just the widespread use of ad block as well. Um, so it's not just YouTube that can demonetize videos. You guys at home can demonetize videos yourselves just by using an ad block. So it seems like the advertising industry on the internet as a whole is you know, not exactly satisfied with the way things are going. Combine that with the, you know, the rise in use of ad block and um, things like uh, being attached to, uh, you know, I mean, you know, a lot of advertisers are um, are worried about their, their adverts being attached to, to channels and content that might make them look negative. I mean, if you've seen some of the drama channels here on YouTube, you know, do you think that there are going to be advertisers that want to attach their name to that? So, um... So it does, in some ways, you know, the, the fact that we have arrived at this situation is not really in the least bit surprising. And a lot of people seem to be looking towards the Patreon model, which does seem to be probably one of the better funding models, the um, the idea of being a patron of the arts, as it were. And that's I, I kind of like that, because the people that can afford to pay um, can, and, and, and those that can't, you know, don't have to. And to me, that's important. It's really important that... that uh, stuff isn't behind a paywall, least of all my content, because hell, this does not deserve to be behind a paywall, I can tell you. Um, but also, um, one of the reasons why I love open source software so much is because it's so universally accessible, and I kind of want to make my content in the same spirit as that. So, so I've never really thought much of the whole paywall thing. Um, it just doesn't seem to be in the spirit of what I want to produce. It makes sense for things like uh, Game of Thrones and, uh, and and whatever Netflix are doing for their uh, for their latest original series, um, because that stuff is um, it's you know it's production quality. Uh, but for more sort of casual day to day stuff, stuff that you might just put on as a bit of background noise or whatever, you know there is uh, there are there are sort of more suitable payment methods. There's also uh, as I've uh, reviewed on this channel previously, the Brave browser. Uh, from Brave.com, which is a pretty decent browser, actually, new into the mix. It was started uh, by an ex-employee of Firefox and based on some of Chrome's or Chromium's uh, technology. And they've come up with, uh, yeah, this Brave browser, which has a built-in mechanism uh, which allows you to uh, contribute to websites. Now, I've not actually tried this out. I've just, I literally just read the feature... Um, uh, come up on their website today, so I don't have any idea like how fully implemented it is, but they're certainly intending on rolling this feature out as a uh, as a sort of a um, a flagship element of this browser. And the idea is that you can visit a website and you can uh, you can financially support a website that you like through the Brave browser. 
um, which I think is really quite good. Uh, they do talk about replacing ads on websites with the Brave ads and then giving a share of those ads to the uh, to the publisher of the content as well. So it does look like Brave want to replace the traditional advertising system we have with one that's a little bit fairer to, to everyone and that fits within a bit more of a standard uh, system. And it would be really great if in the future this would this this um, technology would be implemented into other browsers and it would just be uh, like a natural course of events where you'd be surfing the internet, you come across a website or an article you like, and then you just throw in a few, you know, a couple of tips. Almost like um, like buskers on a high street who play music and people tip them as they go, which uh, which is you know that's that's kind of the way I see the internet and 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 that I think would be a good way forward as well. I think advertising certainly has its merits as well, and this channel is um, mostly funded by advertising, and it does have an impact as well. Like, I'm certainly not a fully funded professional YouTuber, that, you know, not by any stretch, but, um, well, but I'm self-employed. And when you're self-employed, it becomes very apparent that when you do unpaid work, that's, that is money straight out of your pocket because you've only got X number of hours in the day, you don't necessarily have a, you know, nine to five hours as well. So, you know, with all this time and all this scheduling scheduling balancing up, free work costs more money to like a self-employed person than it might do to someone with a nine to five. So when it comes to things like YouTube, even though I'm not getting like a particularly large amount of money, I'm getting enough money that uh, this hobby can then pay for itself and then I can do more videos than I'd otherwise be able to do because if um, You know if I wasn't if, you know if YouTube wasn't um, You know wasn't monetizing my content there would be a lot less videos on this channel um, Simply because I'd need to spend that time doing paid work uh, now fortunately, you know like th th these videos actually draw in draw in a fair amount of work um, themselves, so they kind of work as the ad in that regard, but um but uh, yeah, like monetization on these issues, like it is important and it does affect um, sort of our, our, you know, like how 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 we make videos in in, in you know in, in its rawest term, how we can afford to, how it fits into our lives, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think I've said just about everything that I want to say. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I don't think this is really censorship. You can make an you you can make an argument that encouraging some kind of content over others is a kind of censorship. But uh, YouTube don't necessarily have an obligation to provide you with a platform. That being said, there is a counter to this. Uh, and I'm going to use the um, electoral finance system of the United States as an example here. Uh, but effectively, right, say there is an election for, I don't know, any given election, right? Um, governor. There you go. Nice, easy one, right? Now, and I am a person who is extremely wealthy and owns a business. Now, as someone who is extremely wealthy and owns a business, I am quite likely to be affected in a big way by whoever the next governor of my state is going to be. So it would make sense from a business point of view if I were to support a candidate that had my interest, interests at heart. Now, that's all well and good, but what if both of the candidates had my interest at heart and I wanted to make sure they stayed that way. I could donate large amounts of money to both of those candidates. I could even donate large amounts of money equally. I could donate a million pounds per campaign to each of these candidates. Now those candidates have to listen to me because I have the power to withdraw money from one or the other. So what I've effectively done is made both of those candidates dependent on my financial contributions in order to get elected. And if I withdraw from one, it means the other would get an advantage, um, you know, by default. So you could argue that YouTube could or is doing a very similar thing where they can decide not to monetize or even have on their platform content that they don't agree with or that they don't want. Um, and that YouTube have, you know, provided a universal platform to everyone and they can withdraw it from any of those individual people at any time, which, you know, through the same method gives them a degree of power over their user base. Now, I don't think this is happening, but you can make that argument and you could also make the argument that, that is censorship. But the thing is, YouTube is still providing us with you know, the ability to upload unlimited videos with unlimited bandwidth allocation. Um, that's, a, that's, that's, that's something to be grateful for, to be honest.
you know, even if they aren't monetizing our content. So, um, so that's my thoughts on the issue. I don't think it's censorship. I don't necessarily see this as a massive change in YouTube in the same way that some of the other YouTubers might be freaking out about, uh, because they have been doing it to other channels for quite some time. This is just formalizing the process. And in fact, they have brought in an appeals procedure, which allows people to actually uh, claim that their content is actually advertiser friendly and can challenge the decisions made by the, the automated bots. So it does possibly seem like this might be a way to to try and generate a lot more uh, advertiser friendly content family friendly content to basically bring youtube into the living room i mean most people i know still watch tv the old fashioned way but that isn't going to last that much longer um and youtube's got to get their foot in the door you know netflix have their originals uh you know there's there's hulu stuff there's um uh, this Sky, Sky even have an online portal. ITV, Channel Four in the UK. Here, we, you know, we have an online portal. So there's a lot of ad there's a lot of options when it comes to viewing online content from smart TVs and so forth. Um, and that's going to be the norm at some point. You're just going to buy a TV and it's going to have you know your BBC iPlayer. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can do that with TVs now, where it's just got iPlayer and Netflix already running on it. So YouTube need to be there, and they and and it's not enough just to be a big enough brand name to be able to get their to to be able to get their uh, app on a smart TV on that platform. That's the easy part. the The difficult part is then making their content and possibly even curating their content so that um so that your average person on the street is going to to find it appealing. Uh, YouTube has has traditionally been a platform where where you know niche topics have thrived, it's like open source software. Um, but they you know, YouTube are going to have to have some degree of mass appeal if they're going to succeed on, uh, on you know, on, on living room TVs and desktops and laptops are, are, are not being bought as much as they used to because people tend to be drifting more towards tablets and uh, and smart TVs for all of their their needs in that department. And of course, you know, why shouldn't they? So that's just a few thoughts on the issue. Um, thank you very much for listening. I look forward to hearing your thoughts down below. Don't forget to, of course, check out some of my non-YouTube stuff. If you're going to check out one of them, check out the podcast because I have a lot of fun making that, but um, it's probably not going to be on this channel for, for, for much longer because um, as much as I like it, some of you guys don't. So, um, so I do listen to your feedback. Um, so... That's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.